In this microsode, I will describe some of the main elements of the Inkscape interface. For those of you who have just installed Inkscape for the first time or just recently, this screencast should be beneficial to you. Okay, let's begin. Um, the first thing that we have when we start up Inkscape, uh, we have what is typical, um, the menu bar up top. It is here that we find uh, some of the more important things of the program uh, that are kind of hidden away. Um, one of the things that we can find in here is uh, document properties for one. Uh, we can change various things here. And another important uh, tool that I use inside of here is the Inkscape preferences. Um, you can go in here and change uh, certain things uh, to get the program to perform differently. Okay. So that's the menu bar and that's where we find some of those things. Uh, the whiteboard option, by the way, I think it might that it might only work on a Linux uh, um, distribution. I know it's not there in Windows, and I'm not quite sure if it's there in OS X. Uh, the next thing that we have is a commands bar. Uh, the commands bar is kind of like a global toolbar with some of the more important things uh, displayed, such as opening and saving, printing, um, and uh, it's we find some of our more important tools over to the uh, uh, right side such as fill and stroke, text, uh, and align and distribute. Uh, when we fire up the edit objects uh, dialog, you'll notice that we have a dockable dialog that pops up. We can go ahead and move our display over a little bit. Um, what's handy about the dockable uh, option is that it, it tidies up everything so you don't have open windows on top of each other all the time. Uh, in Linux, it's not such a big deal because we can roll up our dialog boxes very easily. Uh, in, in Windows, for example, those things do get a little cluttered. What's nice about this is you can uh, make this any size you want, uh, and you can also roll it back in to the side. We do that by using this Iconify icon, and it just pushes it back in, so it frees up some space on our canvas. We double-click that, and we can open that back up again. Um, so each time that we open up a dialog box that wants to dock, um, we just get a new set of options. Uh, okay, so you see that we have the align and distribute, and then our fill and stroke gets pushed to the bottom. And we can just, we can push in certain elements, or both, and it's just a nice clean way of opening things and getting them out of the way. I'll go ahead and close that now. That was the commands bar. Uh, the next thing that we have is a tool controls bar and a toolbox. Uh, I'll talk about the toolbox first. Um, what's in the toolbox are the main tools that you use to draw with. Uh, we have a selector tool. Uh, we, we use that to select objects, a node tool, a tweak tool, zoom, square, 3D tool, 3D box tool, a uh, circle, polygon, stars, spiral tool, a freehand drawing tool, bezier path tool, calligraphy, a bucket fill, text, a uh, diagram connector, gradient, and color picker. And um, also we have a uh, tools control bar. Uh, we have some of the things that we have when we're selected with the uh, when we have the uh, uh, transform or select button uh, highlighted. You see that uh, we have certain things displayed here. Uh, we have a uh, a coordinate system. We also have a length and width. Uh, we have an aspect ratio button. So, for example, if I'm drawing a square. Um, and I go back to the selector button. If I want to change its size, I can grab uh, our handles, or I can change them here. And if I want to keep its aspect ratio, I can select this. And you see that the aspect ratio uh, stays the same. And we also have a units button. And on both of these toolbars, we have drop arrows where, uh, depending on the resolution of your screen, uh, certain icons will be hidden and be rolled up into this uh, down arrow drop bar there. Uh, it's important to note that the tools control bar is dynamic. So depending on what tool you're in, 
you'll see that the, the controls bar changes and displays some extra options for that particular drawing tool. Square has certain things. Tweak has certain options. So it's great because um, when you're using these tools, you don't have extra dialog boxes popping up. You have just one and things disappear and, and show up as they're needed. So it's kind of like a smart dialog box in a way. Um, the next thing that we have obviously is our canvas. The canvas is the white area here and uh, this is the portion of which you draw on. Uh, typically when you start it up for the first time you have a page border. Um, it's not necessary that you have this displayed at all. Um, it acts as sort of a reference. Um, I like drawing with it on uh, but I typically draw with uh, in landscape mode. You can change that by going to the settings here, change it to landscape, or you can just turn it off altogether. That is our canvas. The next thing that we have is a set of rulers uh, vertically and horizontally across here. This kind of gives us a sense of, of uh, how big items are, where we are on the canvas. Um, if you're drawing, if you wish to have reference uh, guides, you can go up into the ruler, left click, hold it down, and drag guide points out. And these are great if uh, you know you want to uh, draw to a particular size. Uh, you see your object will snap to them. It's very nice and handy. Uh, double clicking on these guides expose a location uh, units so uh, you can move those and you can also have angular guidelines by selecting up in the corner if I can get it here and you can pull down uh, angular guides as well you can delete those by taking any guide left mouse button clicking and pushing back into the ruler You can turn the guide visibility off. You do that here. You can turn it back on. And you can also remove them by holding the control button, left mouse clicking each guide. It'll turn red and it'll disappear. Okay, that's our guides. We also have a grid system. Uh, that can be turned on by going to our view pull down grid and we have a grid system displayed and if you like to draw with a grid you see how that works we also have uh, we can modify the grid by going into file document properties going to grids we can set x y the spacing um, another nice thing about the grid is it does get a little hairy uh, on the uh, canvas and uh, we have the option of turning dots on instead, which uh, kind of makes it a little nice so you can see what you're doing. Okay, we can remove the grid entirely, get rid of our option, our object there. Uh, we also have the op option of drawing with axonumeric grids. Uh, if you're drawing uh, in isometric mode, for example. kind of see how that works that's a grids the next thing that we have is a swatches palette it is down here that we have uh, colors displayed uh, the default uh, swatches palette that's displayed is the inkscape palette and there's quite a few colors here. If you wish to uh, change your palette, you can uh, select your little arrow key here, and you'll come with, uh, you get a little pop up with various uh, other palettes. For example, if I want the Tango palette, uh, I can turn that on and I get less colors, but I get a, a very simple palette. This is one of my favorite palettes to use. I also like the uh, Ubuntu palette. Uh, it's kind of based on Tango and it has a few more colors. Uh, the way that that works, if you have a shape, for example, 
if you want to change the color you select it with your selector tool and you can pick any color in your palette okay you can also change colors by having it selected picking on a a palette square and left click and dragging and dropping on your fill and stroke so if you want to change the fill and stroke you can do it that way as well okay that is swatches and finally we have a status bar the status bar uh, displays some uh, information about our object when we select it for example it's telling me it's a rectangle and it's on layer one um, it tells me that I have a dark blue fill a light brown stroke and it tells me that my stroke size is 32 pixels I can right click on that number and change uh, the size of the stroke with any of these predefined numbers uh, I can also uh, right click on the fill and the stroke I can remove them uh, a couple more options there I can also view its opacity and change its opacity here if I want to make that 50 percent transparent You'll see that I can do that. I'll change it back to 100%. Uh, we also have a layer section here with visibility and locking. If I want to turn everything on layer one off, I can do that. Turn it back on. If I want to lock everything on layer one, I can lock it and I can no longer select it on my canvas. I can move the canvas around but I cannot select it. We can unlock that. By the way, we move the canvas, items on the canvas, with the, the middle button. If we hold it down and just kind of pan around, we can move that. We can also roll. I can hold the control button down, pan in and out. The shift button will pan left to right. It's kind of how that works. Um, also, if this were, were an object path it tells me down in the status bar that it's a path with four nodes and it also uh, will sometimes give you hints and information uh, if I'm drawing a circle for example it'll tell me to drag to create an ellipse drag controls to make an arc or a segment uh, holding the control key down will make a perfect circle as opposed to an, an ellipse so when you're drawing, you always want to take notice of your status bar because it'll kind of give you tips on, on what you will want to do. Um, also, it gives me an indication of where my X, Y, and Z are located. Uh, Z would be my uh, uh, cursor coordinates, uh, and I have zooming. I can do that here by just selecting the down arrows, or I can type in something if I want to see 70% of the view. I can do that here. And that is pretty much the Inkscape interface. So if you were new to Inkscape, uh, hopefully I've taught you some of the terminology. Um, there's still lots of little things to play with and discover, but I think I covered the most important parts. So I hope you enjoyed this micro-sode. I'm HeathenX.